Hi YouTube, I'm Emma. Welcome back to one of my auto repair videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove and install the stator for your AC compressor for a 2003-2007 Honda Accord. Now, if you've seen my previous videos on uh, uh, removing and installing the AC compressor, you know that I talked about how the AC compressor works, is that it uses an electro electromagnet uh, magnetic coil, and when that is turned on, it engages the clutch, and that basically locks the pulley in place. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to remove it and how to replace it. The reason that we're doing this is that when we were testing it, we actually found out that the stator, well, well the stator and the coil are the same thing. We found out that it was bad, so we want to remove it so we can replace it. Uh, this is the old one from our old car, by the way. Uh, from Amiro's car, actually. We had to replace it. So, to wait to the way to replace it is a bit simple. If you have something like this, a Milwaukee cordless scratcher, or uh, something like this, a impact wrench, it'll probably make the job easier. Now, if you don't have those tools, you can always use a 10 millimeter socket. Uh, we have a ratchet wrench right here. Uh, fix it on. Make sure that it's in the right way. You, you can see when we try to do it right now, it just spins or along with it. So you, what you want to do is you want to take a hammer. I'll use this. You want to keep this steady, and then you want to knock it down. You might have to hold on really tightly while you do it. But maybe for me, it's not working because uh, I don't have good grip. So we're just going to be using the coiler scratcher. There we go. I'm gonna assume that this just goes cleanly off. Looks like there's a washer too. So I'll probably keep that in there. As you saw, I took out a washer when we undid this. Now that washer is actually very important. It's a spacer. It, it makes a gap between the, uh, the well, basically it's really important for the mechanism in order to create a gap so that it doesn't just lock in place when it turns on. The next step is taking, right here, a snap ring out. Now we have a special tool for this. It's actually pretty cool. In its resting mode, it looks like pliers. But when we reverse it, it actually does the opposite. When you squeeze, it actually opens. Now that's useful for the snap ring because there are two holes right here. One and two. And we insert the prongs in two. So one and make sure they're tightly in there. And then when we squeeze, that's pretty cool, right? And then we should be able to take it out. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Alright, next step is to remove the pulley. This big part is the pulley, and it's a bit tricky because there's a bearing. Now, in order to take out, what you have to do is take lubricant. And there are two ways to do it. Uh, one of them requires a specialized tool. The way I'm showing you right now uh, doesn't need that. I'll get to that later. So, well, after you spray lubricant, you're going to take a hammer, make sure it's resting, and then you just want to knock it out. Okay, knock it out, turn it around, turn it a bit more, and keep doing that until it's out. The reason you want to keep turning it is so that it comes out evenly, and, not, and you don't break it. You can see right now it's already creating some distance. Now, the way requiring the way using the specialized tool, uh, the specialized tool is called a three-jaw three puller. And the way it works is that there are, actually, pull it up. The way it works is that there are three jaws, and it sort of grabs onto the pulley like this. In the center of those jaws, there's like a bolt, and you screw in the bolt, and then you sort of pull it out. Now, the reason you would want to use a three-jaw puller is for uh, some scenarios like if the compressor is still in the car. So using the hammer way, it might not be as efficient. So you might have to use a three jaw puller. Uh, but my dad didn't want to use it, so he used a hammer. So I can already feel it coming out. Maybe I have to turn it around from this side because I can see there's a gap on the top, but not on the bottom. So. All right, there we go, the pulley. Now, this is what it looks like from the front, no, from the back, from the inside. 
This is what it looks like from the outside. Next up is the clutch coil, the stator, what we're trying to replace. And what's keeping us from taking it out is another snap ring. So as you can see, we're going to place it in. You can see the two notches, I hope. Then we're going to squeeze. Okay. Put that aside for now. And you should be able to pull it out now, but there might be a tight connection for the wires. So in order to give yourself some room, you might want to take a screwdriver and loosen the wires. This is because when you try to pull it out, the wires might not give you enough room to take out the coil. So that's taken out now. I'll set that aside for now. And as you can see, it's pretty loose. Now, when you're doing this, make sure to take note of two notches uh, one here and one over there and you want to mark their position so from and you can see here we can see red marker and I don't see the red marker here but we marked it so you want to you want to mark it because that will come into play when you're trying to replace it so now we can take out the coil okay there we go so that's what it looks like. Huh. What could be the what could be the problem on this one? Just to show you quickly why we're replacing the uh, stator. When we tap the multimeter prongs together, you can see there's noise. When we put this needle to a ground, Zami should be here to explain it, but I'm here. Uh, and then we put this into the hole. You can see there is no sound. That means there's no continuity. So that means that the stator isn't working. It's not providing continuity, and therefore we have to replace it. All right, so we don't have the new stator right now. We just want to show you how to install it. And like I always say, installation is the same as removal, just in reverse. So let's start from the, well, I guess from the end, actually. So like I said, remember these notches? So you want to line them up with the marks that you made. So the marks that we made are right here. And you want to make sure that the wires are on the correct side. And another way to do this is to take note of this flat surface and this flat surface. And you want to try to mate them uh, to line them up. And the reason you want to mate, uh, make them line up, make, make sure that the mark and the notch are on the right side. Is so that it's flat. Alright, so it's pretty locked in. Now, if I recall correctly, you can either put the wire back on but I don't see any reason to do that since there's no continuity then there's the stop ring so we're going to take our cool reversible tool I still don't remember what to call this we're going to I'm not sure if there's a particular way to put it on but we're going to extend it it's basically like clamps if you think about it but uh <laughs> If you're a seasoned mechanic, you probably know how this tool works. You might have to use a screwdriver to hold it down while you do it. So, like I said, if you're not experienced like me, you might have a lot of trouble doing this. But, like I always say, as long as you keep trying, you, there's no failing. Okay, it took me a few minutes and a lot of effort to finally get it in. But, you know, just take it took me the special pliers and a screwdriver while I did it. I just try to hold it down but in the end uh, especially if you have a lot of practice you should be able to do it so in order to test if it's incorrectly you might want to use screwdriver to push it down uh, I already did that uh, but definitely the, the good way to test it is to see if it actually comes out now then if you want to put the wire back on uh, pretty simple make sure the second wire is looped under put this round part on top of the screw hole yeah, this screw. Okay. So the screw hole is right here. So all you have to do is make a logical assumption about where everything fits since that L shaped bracket goes on top of this. So you want to take your screw. Uh, we're not actually going to put it on, but might as well. And screw it in a few notches, a few threads, I mean. And then you want to tighten it with your screwdriver. So, yeah, actually, I might, I might as well tighten it since this is an easy step to do. And when we're going to replace it, 
there's no harm done. So not too not too tight uh, because I don't want to strip it. Next step is is putting back on the pulley. Now on um, inside the pulley there is the bearing. Now if you have a faulty bearing, you can always take it out in order to replace it by taking a socket that's exactly as big as the bearing, placing it on, take a hammer, and just knock it out. Now make sure there is a hole under so that the bearing can fall out. Uh, we have to set up right here two blocks of wood just to demonstrate what it's supposed to be like that. Uh, but we don't have to replace the bearing, so it's all right. Or it's, so it's for it to go on, I'm assuming that this big hole is meant to fit around this uh, uh, clutch coil instead of this side. So it goes on like this. Now when we took it out, we had to knock it out. So I'm assuming that in order to put it back in, you have to knock it in. But I may be wrong, so let's just try pushing it in. We don't, we don't have to use a lot of force. So it's already lubricated, so just goes on like that. So no knocking required. If it's lubricated, you should just be able to push it right in. Okay, so if I remember correctly, what comes after that is the snap ring. Now, last time it was tricky, but I hope it's not with this one. So... We have to take the screwdriver and keep it down. Looks like this one's going to be a bit trickier since it has a different shape. Alright, I think I got it. I'm so close right now. Ooh. One of the One of the sides is on. I just gotta get the other one. Yes! See, this one, I think it's easier actually. This one's much more easier to put back on. All right, so I'm just gonna make sure it's on correctly. This, this side doesn't look like it's fully in. So I'm just gonna... All right, next up is putting the clutch back on. Now, like I said before, it's very important to make sure you keep the spacer. So when you're putting back on, when it's facing upwards, you should put the spacer on first. And then you should put the uh, clutch on, or you could take the spacer, tilt it on its side, then you can put the spacer inside, make sure it's flat, and then you could put it on. So I'm going to tilt it downwards so I make sure I don't lose the spacer. Then you just want to push it in, and it just goes in like that. And I guess... I'm hoping there's no more trickery here because it looks like I did a good job here. And I guess next step is putting the bolt back on. All right, so my dad recommends that if you're working on something that has a chance for the bolt to break loose, especially a pulley, to use thread locker or Loctite. Now, basically it acts as adhesive and when you put the bolt in, it's basically liquid rubber that you, you put in, you put the bolt in, after a few minutes it dries, and it keeps the bolt locked in. It acts as sort of an adhesive. So when you put the lock, uh, thread locker in, you screw the bolt in, after a few minutes, it dries. So we're not going to put it on right now since we're going to take it off anyway. Now after this, you're going to want to use a Milwaukee, uh, you, you want to use your uh, tool to screw it in. We have the cordless ratchet or the impact wrench like I said. Or you could use some sort of mechanism or contraption to keep this locked in place while you screw it in. But if you're using thread lock, thread locker, it should spit the clutch should spin in the way of the bolt, so it shouldn't really matter. But we're going to be using the Milwaukee anyway. Make sure that it's facing the right way. Maybe, maybe you definitely have to find a way to keep it locked. I my money and I just showed you how to remove and replace the uh, stator or clutch coil in an AC compressor, and in, in this case, in a Honda Accord 2003-2007. Now, I'm doing these videos because my dad is teaching me, and I want to teach to you what he taught me, you know, sort of passing it down through generations. So, I hope you enjoyed, uh, and I hope it was informative. So, please like or comment, subscribe, look at our videos on I and I especially the auto repair videos. 
and you know it's actually getting pretty late i think it's already 10 p.m right now this guy is pretty dark so i'm gonna call it a night mechanic i'm on signing out peace